Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Akeem Lawanson and in today's Fix for Entertainment news, we've got updates on Wolverine and Deadpool 3, where you can expect the Knuckles live action series timeline to fall in regards to the Sonic movies, Nightcrawler surprisingly joins the Spider-Verse, and so much more in today's Fix. Let's drop it. All right now we got an update on the Sonic movie spinoff, Knuckles, coming to Paramount Plus. The casting includes returning Sonic the Hedgehog 2's Idris Elba as the titular Echidna and Adam Pally, who you might remember was the bumbling Green Hills police officer Wade Whipple. Now Tika Sumter will also reprise her role from the movies, guest starring in a few episodes. Now no word on whether James Marsden will make any appearances as Donut Lord. Now, production for the Sonic spinoff is currently underway in London with director Jeff Fowler returning to helm the pilot episode and executive producing the Knuckles series. Now, one of the primary questions fans might have about the upcoming series is, what's it about and where does it fall in the overall timeline of the Sonic movies? Like, will it take place before the events seen in the films as an origin story for Knuckles or perhaps just before Knuckles meets Robotnik and finds his way to Green Hills? Well, the official logline suggests it'll take place after the events of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 as a lead up to Sonic 3. And it also details that Knuckles agrees to train Officer Wade in the ancient ways of the Echidna taking him under his wing as his protege. Now, how he plans to teach a bumbling cop how to be an echidna warrior is beyond me, but with the comedic delivery both characters had in Sonic 2, this sounds like the series will lean more on the comedy side of things than high stakes action. Now, this also leads to another question, who will be the big baddie of the Knuckles series? Now, given the end credits scene reveal from Sonic 2 showing Shadow the Hedgehog, Sonic 3 is moving into Sonic Adventure territory with its storytelling. So with that, if they wanted to tee things up for the big screen return in Sonic 3, we might see the first guardian of the Chaos Emerald show up in Chaos. Now, Chaos was the water-based enemy seen in Sonic Adventure 1 who changed forms with every Chaos Emerald it acquired. Now, Chaos, also known as the God of Destruction, would be an appropriate enemy for the Knuckles series given its connection to the Chaos Emerald and the Knuckles clan who sealed Chaos in the Master Emerald 3,000 years ago. As the story goes with Chaos, it was released by Dr. Eggman, but soon betrayed him and set out on a path of destruction. And with the Master Emerald being destroyed towards the end of Sonic 2, causing the disbursement of the Chaos Emeralds, one of the plots could be Knuckles and Wade pursuing the Chaos Emeralds with Chaos in its first form trailing behind them. Now, while I know this might sound different from the video game as Sonic was the core hero going up against Chaos, the films have taken liberties with the source material and merely using the Sonic games as a blueprint for how to approach things in a more cinematic way to maximize fan service for Sonic enthusiasts like myself. I'm very enthusiastic when it comes to Sonic, as you can clearly tell. Now, with Chaos potentially being the villain in the Knuckles series, the events there should perfectly set up what we'll see in Sonic 3 with the inclusion of Shadow the Hedgehog. Now, we'll see how much Chaos control Sonic fans will have as we wait for the Knuckles series to hit Paramount+. Plus. Now, with Sonic the Hedgehog 3 scheduled at the time of this video to premiere sometime in December of next year, it'll likely be that we'll see the Knuckles series on the small screen sometime later this year or early next, building up to the hype of the upcoming movie. Now, as for now, director Jeff Fowler did tease this image of the slate, signaling production is underway. Now, we'll keep you updated as more news breaks on both the Knuckles series and Sonic 3 the movie. As for now, drop your theories as to who you think the big baddie will be in the Knuckles series leading up to the third Sonic movie installment. All right, Mamma Mia, would you look at that? From Sega to Nintendo, the Super Mario Brothers movie continues to dominate, jumping to a total of $347.8 million at the domestic box office. Now, that brings its total to $677.96 million globally. Now, just two weekends in, the Mario movie is breaking all kinds of animation and video game adaptation records at the box office, with it being the highest grossing video game adaptation to ever double jump onto the silver screen. It's honestly no surprise that the Illumination film is doing well, as the Mario franchise has a long and storied history steeped in video games, and is one of Nintendo's most popular franchises to date. 
Now, as the weeks continue, I'm sure more folks will grab their friends and say, let's go see the Mario movie. They'll say it exactly like that too. Yep, I bet you. That's a Spider-Man right there, if I ever done seen one. That's a Spider-Man. Now, web slinging over to Marvel news, we've got a mutant joining the Spider-Verse. Now, coming out of nowhere is Uncanny Spider-Man, which is a new comic series that'll see the X-Men's web crawler, web crawler, <laughs> night crawler, it'll see the X-Men's night crawler donning his own Spider-Man suit to become New York's friendly neighborhood spider. I want, I want us to keep that in there. I like that. Uh, let's keep that take in there. I said, instead of saying, Web crawler, I said night crawler. I got confused, cause you know the two. Anyways, the story, however, is not so friendly. It'll take on a dark tone, given it'll be part of Marvel's Fall of X lineup. Now, true believers are well aware that the Fall of X story is a tragic one, so the Uncanny Spider-Man series will likely expand upon the events of the upcoming Hellfire Gala and all that has happened to mutant kind in this particular space. Uh, it'll be interesting to see why Nightcrawler took up arms and web as Spider-Man becoming a web crawler, bamfing his way through New York come September 6th. This is a weird pairing, but it looks dope, right? That looks beautiful. Yeah, we'll see. And finally, for those few folks out there that might not think Hugh Jackman is jacked enough to pick up the claws of Wolverine for Deadpool 3, here he is getting himself in peak physical shape for his return as Logan. Now in the video, Hugh Jackman can be seen running at maximum speed, getting the cardio going for the long road ahead of him as he's training for Deadpool 3. Now the last time we saw Jackman as Logan was in Logan back in 2017. Now our boy is getting up there in age, so it's admirable to see him training so damn hard at the age of 54 to wear that weird suit he wore back in the first X-Men movie. Y'all remember that? I, I remember seeing that damn suit. It was a black suit. It was, I, I was thinking, man, what the hell is he wearing? Is, that's not the actual Wolverine I know. Where the hell is the mask? Where's the where's the yellow in the suit and, and everything else? Who are are these X-Men? You know, that movie was hella lame. Y'all know it was too, but you know, Fox's track record of making good Marvel movies was mediocre when it came to the X-Men films. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how Wolverine is handled as part of the MCU. But fingers crossed, they'll finally give us fans what we want as it pertains to the Wolverine suit. The one that's, you know, yellow and blue, of course, with the mask. You hear me? Y'all hear me. That's what I want in Deadpool 3. Sound off in the comments if you wanted to. Yeah. All right, that about does it for today's Fix of Entertainment news. I'm Akeem Lawanson, and thank you so much for watching. Now that you're caught up on today's news, please check out our previous episode. Download the IGN app on all your devices, and for everything else, stick with IGN.